Hello and welcome to episode two of We're the Lollacourse back in the game. This one, uh, Rob, is titled 2015, the year of the future, and back to the future, and maybe surf Nazis must die. I think that was. Class of Newcomb High, I think, was set around him, and lots of other things with 2015 in the title. I think this episode title was less succinct than the last one. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> sometimes you need a good one to appreciate the, the bad ones. ones. And so, <laughs> we're two episodes well. in, we've already, we've already peaked so, on episode two. Episode title. three is going to be immense. It's gonna. I'm gonna get Harold Pinter to write the title. Can we just call it Episode Three? <laughs> in 3D. Mm. Imagine if real life was in 3D. That would be terrifying. Yeah. I remember reading a, um, a, a advert for a laser eye surgery company, mm. and they said two people. One of them said it's like watching everything in 3D, and the other one said it's like living in HD. And I thought. Mm. Mm. Your eyes have always been capable of that. Love. You wait till they find out about 4K TV. Is that going back down there for a refund? <laughs> oh, it's mad. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you've listened to our introduction and the kind of look back at our gaming year of 2014. And uh, we didn't do a review of the year, which we did discuss at one point. We were going to do just going over all the news from 2014. Mm. But frankly, we figured you'd be more interested in hearing us just talk about two games for an hour <laughs> than you would hearing about hundreds of them. I mean, there were some good games released in 2014, oh, right. but to be honest, we didn't play that much. Mm. It's so, and Some of them were based around good innovations. I don't want to run down Shadows of Mordor because it was a lot of fun. I yeah. had a play on the PlayStation 4. It's a lot of fun. Obviously, it borrows quite heavily from I say Assassin's Creed, and I don't see yeah, that as a light. Yeah, Assassin's no, that's Creed. fair. Uh, but obviously, the Nemesis system was the big thing about yeah. Shadows of Mordor. Yeah. So I look at that as more of a game which had one big innovation. Yeah. And uh, I really look which forward to seeing that in other games. Yeah, because it's inevitably going to yeah. be stolen. I mean, it's like Gears of War's <laughs> cover system became the cover system choice yeah. for every other third person shooter. Hmm. With the exception of a Transformers game I played where there was no cover base. You just stood behind a wall. And what, what it was good though, um, you know how when you're playing a cover base shooter and you're in a wall and you come out but your body's in the way because hmm. your gun's in this hand? With this Transformers game, I think it was the fall of Cybertron. Mm-hmm. You could transform whichever arm was closest to the wall Ooh. into a gun. So if you were like in a corner and you could just lean out to the right, your right hand would become a gun. That was a good, good oh, idea. Nice. It was nice almost touch. like I said, we, we don't need a cover system because we'll just make your arm turn into a suitable yeah. gun at a time. Oh, right. nice. But it yeah, oh. could have done with a cover system. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> to be honest. But Transformers the animated movie is the best one of the series. I'm going to throw that out there. Screw yeah. you, Michael Bay. But I will say, um, <laughs> as games go, the uh, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron are phenomenally good games mm. because they're not based on the films in any way. They're actually given a license to just make a really good Transformers game, and they did brilliantly. Mm. So uh, Metroplex, the giant city-sized, mm. oh, sorry, is in um, Fall of, and uh, he's great fun when he's pounding a character into yeah. dust, just repeatedly, and you just basically just control his fist pounding a. Decepticon. It's kind of one of those, um, what can I say, universes that a lot of people can love. We love it for yeah. the nostalgic value, whereas I'm sure kids love it yeah. for the same reasons we loved it when we were kids. It's robots and cars. Yeah. Uh, it's, and it's, dinosaurs. Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, was the biggest issue of Age of Extinction, because they had on all the posters, look, it's Grimlock. You remember Grimlock? Mm. He was that really stupid dinosaur robot that everybody loved. But he was awesome. As he well. was awesome. And he was awesome because he was a little bit kind of special needs. <laughs> because well I think they even covered it in the story that they just they they looked at real dinosaurs and saw they had tiny brains mm. so they created a robot with a very small processor and it just get taught very with, basically basically yeah <laughs> like uh, me me Grimlock me not like that it's like brilliant that's because that, that's how all dinosaurs would have talked it so would, if they definitely. were able to talk whereas the land before time got it completely wrong yeah and, and Age of Extinction decided to go oh, we're doing flame breathing T-Rex the Optimus Prime's going to ride his group knock. That's going to be exciting. They obviously had to change Slag. Couldn't have Slag as a, a name, so they did change that to a far more effective and slightly less offensive <laughs> word. But, um, yeah, and then it was like the last 10 minutes of the film. It's barely in it before that. 
absolute disappointment. So 2015, I think we can yeah. be- both safely say that we have plans mm. that will mean that we play more games. I hope so. 2015. Yeah. And, and I'm going to call this section Predictions for 2015. Yeah. Is that better? <laughs> We can't afford sound effects yet. You're going to have to keep it up with it. No, I've, can, I've got sound effects. I've got, I've got two sound effects. You told me before I did that. From the Lollacross days. Oh. Uh, one of which is just the, the peeing into water. And the other is the mm. plop plop sound effect. Oh. Um, which I'm not sure either of those are really appropriate at this point. <laughs> which is a prediction for 2015. <laughs> plop. <laughs> plop. Uh, yeah, probably not. But we'll go with The thing is, when you did that, Instead of thinking of gaming in 2015, mm. I thought of... Horse racing. No. Yeah. I thought of going to the fair and having that game where you have to roll a ball into a target and then there's either a camel or a horse that every time you get a score, they go along with oh. it. And they like the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You kind of have them with the... the you, you bet on them at the fair, you put your 2p in. And... Oh, no, not those. Not those. Oh. This is a big thing. Oh. Like, it's about... I'd say 20 foot long track and they've got these six horses and then you've got all these chairs and it's a bit like ski ball okay but it's just you and like in front of you mm. and you have to roll it and there's like certain holes with different colors and different scores and if you score like five yeah. your horse will be you in five places um and they always have them in like theme parks and things mm. the sort of thing that they can have a guy and they're like come on roll up roll up. oh my god they'll do a commentary mm. and then if you win you get tickets or prize and they play that music huh? well, obviously because it's a horse racing thing yeah but yeah. that's what I thought of, which was relevant to games. It is. Because I'm on topic. Yeah. So 2015, as we keep saying, is, is the year of Back to the Future. Uh, we haven't got hoverboards. Let's do it. Can we get all these cliche things out of the way? Where's my hoverboard? Yeah. Oh, where's my Jaws 19 or whatever it was? Uh, it was Jaws yeah, 19. about that, yep. Uh, where's my jacket that dries itself? What that? My jacket dries itself. They did itself do those, did do those shoes. Yeah, the auto-adjusting shoes. Mm. They actually made those a couple of years ago. Huh? Should have waited, really. But then he did have them available in 2015, so that's fair. Mattel did do a fake hoverboard. I think Tony Hawks did try and make a hoverboard with magnets. Yep. But that's not the same. I'm sure you just need something to hold the and magnets. There is, there the is a flying car. A lot of people say, oh, you need to get flying cars. There are yeah. a couple of... You can buy can you? Yeah, but there's, there's a company that's actually trying to make an actual mm. economical family flying, flying car. car. Like the Jetsons. Similar to the Jetsons. Mm. Um... And there's a brilliant Kevin Smith short, uh, which is shown on... He always a, wears shorts. He does always wear shorts. Mm. And, and can't puff when he doesn't. Well, yeah, there's that. But he did a short with Dante and Randall from Clerks. Mm-hmm. And they were sat in traffic. Have you ever seen that, the flying car short? I don't know that I have, actually. It's um, it, He did it for America, like David Letterman or something like mm, that. It's just a little like, five-minute short. I think it made it onto the Clerks 2 DVD. Mm-hmm. Or it was the Clerks X DVD release. But it was basically Dante and Randall in traffic. And Randall being Randall starts oh. going, hey, what would you do? A flying car. And does go, what, what do you mean? He's like, well, would you like cut off your own foot? Would you cut off your, no, cut off, would you cut off your pinky finger from flying car? He's like, yeah, I'd cut off the pinky finger. Would you cut off your foot? No, you wouldn't cut off your foot for the flying car. <laughs> and you know, I mean, that was, mm. Randall is very persuasive. Yes. And it, it runs to an inevitable conclusion where mm. he basically suggests some horrible sexual mm. event. And he's going, okay, yes. I would do that for the flying car and the punchlines. I was like, oh, I thought I knew you, man. And it just stares out the window. <laughs> uh, and it's brilliant. And there's no flying car will ever be better than the sketch where they discuss the, <laughs> the flying sketch car. sketch where they discuss the flying I do car. Insi- I will try and find it and put it on the roller course later on tonight, just so it's there when people sure. listen to the episode. You'll be able to go to the site. You may have already seen it by that point. I might have to schedule it for Sunday to go about after mm. the episode. So people can listen to this and then see the sketch. Yeah. But um, it's, it's very funny. And so, yeah, so it is 2015. Uh, it's a new year. Mm. Happy New Year, Rob. Happy New Year, Nathan. Happy New Year, listeners. Um, all of you. Yes, and you, the special one that we talked about before. There you are. Uh, not a happy new year to Postman Gav. Why? Is he done just, now? Just don't want him to have a happy oh, new okay. year. Some, he got married last year. He did. He, he's far too cheerful. His postman was all happy. Oh, you say that. We've got a postman who constantly stinks of booze. It's not allowed a van anymore because he crashed it. But they haven't fired him. Well, you know, he just gabs your postman, doesn't mean you shouldn't wish him so a happy year. He comes and sits on the floor in my shop sometimes because he's a bit too dizzy. Yeah. Which is nice. He never delivers it, he just comes in. He asked me the other day if I'd ever heard of um, Breakdance 2, Electric Boogaloo. And I said, of course I have. Even if you've never seen it, everyone knows Electric <laughs> Boogaloo. And he went, have you seen it though? I went, no. I just said no. 
He went, have you seen it? I went, no, not seen it. He went, have you seen it? Sounds like the worst no. Grand Theft Auto side quest ever. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> Steal a postman's uniform, crash the van, and aggressively ask a man in the video shop if he's seen Electric Boogaloo 2. No. Breakdance 2. Sorry. Electric Boogaloo. Breakdance 2, Electric or, Boogaloo. I know they would have had to change the name slightly for Grand Theft Auto. So, mm. so it would have been like Rape Dance 2, Electric Boogaloo. Well, that escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're now living in 2015. Mm. We've got some gaming resolutions. Now, my first game resolution is um, <laughs> 1080 mm. That's uh, another one of those horrible cliches. That's why I get out of the way. It's good. It's good. Viva la resolution. Mm. That's the other one. It's, Any more um, to get out of your system? No. I'm done. So <laughs> go, hit me. Get your resolution. What do you got? Well, as you may have heard me discuss on episode one, I didn't play a great amount in 2014. So I have several games which are either unfinished so or... 2014 games this year. Pretty much. Maybe <laughs> what it comes down to. Some are actually probably older than that, just because either I haven't no, finished I mean, them. Just 2000. Oh no, the actual number. Games, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, yeah, so basically it's the games I haven't got around to either finishing, in some cases, yeah. or even starting. So I'm hoping to get through those before maybe, hopefully, possibly, investing in an Xbox One. If you played seven games a day, you mm. could do that. I could, but I'd also be fired from my job. You'd, uh, you'd have to be different games as well. Well, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, so that's my resolution is to get through the back catalogue, which I seem to have so accumulated. The, the, the pile of shame. The, yeah, the basically. Yeah. pile of shame. Uh, and the, some of it is shame because the wrapper is still on. One or two of them. Well, what so, you need to do, I think, and uh, what you should do is you should put a photo mm. on the blog or a list mm. on the blog. Maybe get listeners to help you choose. Mm. They can pick like a game a month that mm. you have to play. And you have to keep playing until you've finished it. <laughs> yeah, you like it just put it in for an hour. Yeah, you <laughs> can't can't and come back. None of that. Uh, well, I've got a similar one because, uh, as anyone will know, I've got a massive gamer score. There's a mm. pause there. I don't know if you noticed. It was, it was, uh, it was for some people would think, <laughs> yeah, he's fat. But um, it's actually known as a gamer score. I'm currently mm. sitting at 171,264. Mm. Now, I've been just over 170,000 since I got the Xbox One. Mm. Um, the Xbox One has got an interesting thing where even an arcade game gives you a thousand game score. Yeah. And if you've got an arcade game that you've already played on the Xbox One, you still get another thousand mm. game score you play on the Xbox One. So realistically, I should have a lot more than what I've got. Yeah. Now, I don't think I can bring it up on here now, but I did look and I'm about 30% of mm. what my potential game score should be. So this should be a good 400,000 mm. game score, which is frankly obscene. I'm never going to get that. No. I'm, I'm, some games I can't do anymore because they just turn servers off or work players and mm. whatever. But I am aiming this year to raise that up to 42%. 42 is a good number. Yeah. Uh, it's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy number. Yes. Um, it's also the number of how old I am. Mm. So <laughs> if you believe that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd get 42%. Mm. And that's the 42% of my overall score. I also want to try and get 42% of my overall potential achievement amount. Mm -hmm. So this is not the actual points. This is the actual numbers. number of achievements you yeah. could get. So, because it, if you go onto it, so it does tell you yeah, such, and such, five, such and such. And mm. obviously, divide one by one and tell you what percentage is. Now, there is an interesting website. And there's an app actually on the Xbox One. I don't know if you've ever seen it, True Achievements website. Yes, I have. Yep. Now, I wasn't aware of them until... About six months ago, which was somebody who's a bit of an achievement whore. I should have That's been surprising, there. actually. Yeah, I am surprised um, at that one. Because what they do, and for anybody who hasn't seen it, I do urge you to go and sign up for a music, especially if you've got Xbox One, well, get the app. It gives you an actual value oh. for your achievements. So rather than it be like you complete the game, get 100 points, say like the Avatar achievements, so yeah. you can get all of them. In they that, have a very small yeah. actual true mm. achievement score because so many people have achieved it and it's not really representative of it. But mm. you might have an achievement that's really, I mean, like some games have got. Complete extreme difficulty, and they give you ten points just to yeah. be a bit of a bastard about it. Well, they'll give you a hundred points for mm. that. So I'm going to start looking into actually merging a challenge with my true achievement score as well, because obviously getting a lot of achievements doesn't necessarily mean I've got yeah. some difficult ones. I mm -hmm. don't want to just go out and rinse some easy games. Oh, yeah, I know I have done most of them already <laughs> to get to the where I am. Mm. There are a lot of games that I've just played a little bit. Yeah, I mean the sense of achievement with some of them is small. Well, it's like the Simpsons game where you mm. just get one for pressing start. Yeah. 
So it's, I mean, that was kind of a tongue in cheek humor yeah. thing. Yeah, there, there was a. a but there is no value in that. Achievement. Achievement. No. It's, and it gives you points. Mm. If it was a zero point achievement, then reasonable. Mm. Uh, so that is my biggest resolution of the year, just to actually hit that 42. Mm. And if I can do that by the end of the year, then I will reward myself with something nice, new, and shiny. Mm. Um, Tinfoil. That's a good one. Mm. But now, I basically, in 2016, if I can hit 42%, I'm mm. going to buy myself a PS4. Yeah. I will not allow myself one until I hit 42 If I hit 42% mm. by my birthday, then I might consider getting one for birthday present. Yeah. I think that's very unlikely. I've got, <laughs> when you've got 170 birthday. Why are we on this podcast if you've got an achievement to get? 42% <laughs> in, what, seven months is, is going to be quite an ask. I think it's going to be an ask to do it in the year. Because the downside is every time you put a new game in, you have to get you that another well. thousand points. Yeah. So it's going to hopefully make me play more, like you've got, play more of my older games, mm. complete more of my newer games, and then be more considerate about which games I'm putting in and when. So that's my my big yeah. My other one, which I, I did come up with a secondary uh, one, is to play online more. Mm. So I'm going to put this out now. If anybody has an Xbox One, uh, message me on Twitter. Let me know you've got one. I've got people on my friends list, but the problem is some people on the Xbox One haven't updated their profile picture. Now, mm -hmm. you, you might have not seen this. On the Xbox One, it gives you a, a large profile mm -hmm. picture. And the 360, you get the little... Yep, the little one. square one, yeah. And when you see a 360 player on the Xbox One, they have a tiny square in a big square. Mm -hmm. And the downside is some people got the, the Xbox One, but they haven't changed they the haven't game. They haven't changed picture. it around. So they kind of still show up as a 360. So if you've got an Xbox One and you fancy a game or something, particularly something with achievements related, that would be nice, <laughs> um, get in touch because I need to play more. Mm. I, I basically, my gold runs out in the end of March. Mm -hmm. So I want to have a reason to keep it going. To renew it, yeah. Uh, I've let my PlayStation Plus subscription slide um, because I don't have PlayStation 3 anymore. Uh, I do have the PSP, but I've got so many. I've, I've mm. bought the 64 gig card for that. I had to import that from Japan because they don't make it here. Filled it immediately with games I bought yep. through PlayStation Plus. So I thought, well, no, I'm, no, I'm not playing them. Mm. I mean, it's not a huge amount of that. It's £35 for a year. Yeah, it's so comparable it's not, to Xbox yeah. Card. Yeah. And I do mark the PS3 and the PS4 games. So when I do get a PS4, I'll have a back couple of games to download straight away. So I kind of, at the moment, I'm tempted. There is a game on there this month on PS4. I can't remember what it is now, but there's definitely something I really wanted to get. So it might make me jump on it again. But I need to have a reason to. So then obviously we'll go through, and then probably 2016 will be get trophies and improve my trophy score or something. But yeah, um, so that's, that's, that's my two. Play more and play more online. Uh, did you have another one, or are you just concentrate not edging your bets too much? Because obviously you've got other things planned this year. So Yeah, well, I just kind of want to get to the back catalogue, as I said. Eventually, I would like to upgrade to the Xbox One. Uh, I must admit, I am partly holding fire on it, not just because it's still 300 quid or more. I'm not too bothered about the Kinect, frankly, because I bought it for 360 and it was basically now just sitting on top of my tablet. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I might as well make use of what I've got rather than springing 300 quid for something I don't really need at the moment. Obviously, mm. I've got, you know, we talked about last episode, I've got Destiny on 360, yeah. and I've got friends to play with, I've got a hatful of other games. There's just nothing right now that makes me really want an Xbox One. So yeah. my resolution, as I said, is to clear through some of the other stuff so it doesn't feel like a wasted purchase or like I only you know, really did half the game um, before I eventually move on to uh, Expo. So do you think you'd set yourself a percentage for your game score? I mean, do you have quite a tight game score or do you think you've got a lot it's of... Depends on the game. In the lot, there's probably a lot of redundant ones there. There are games which I have rented, yeah, uh, and obviously I only have a small handful of achievements. Depending on again on difficulty, mm. some yeah. are more generous than others. I mean, Last Odyssey was not was it Last Odyssey, uh, which wasn't particularly generous with it. Yeah, and even after playing several hours while renting it, I only yeah picked up a small handful. And as much as the game was okay, I, I'm not a big no RPG yeah. fan of, of that style, so. I'll probably never get those. Yeah. So obviously that diminishes your score somewhat, but equally things like Fallout so 3. Like, maybe, well, perhaps look at what you've mm, got currently. Yeah. And then I'm just trying to see if I can find it quickly while I'm talking, actually. But um, yeah, I don't know if, if a percentage. I mean, I just want to play games. Three. Three. <laughs> three. I just want to play games I enjoy, to be honest. No, no, no. Yeah. Just playing the games mm. you enjoy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I um, 330 a game. Yeah. I mean, I started a, a, 
another Mass Effect playthrough from the very beginning. Yeah. So I've done one again. Yeah. I've picked up a couple of straggling achievements there. I'm tw- probably ninety percent through two. Mm. So I need to finish that and then play three for what will be actually the second time, surprisingly, as much yeah. as I love the series uh, with the birth of my daughter and so forth. I never actually went back to three again, which no. is unusual. But anyway, that's uh, by the by. So there's things like that where I'm sure I pick up achievements I missed the first time round, and yeah. as I said, there's other games ongoing. Some I haven't even opened. I'm sure I'll mm-hmm. pile through and such and such and such and such. So yeah, makes mm. sense. Well, well, we'll probably come back to that another show. I'm sure we will. We'll, we'll Progress see. report. Yeah. Um, so obviously, 2015, we've got very little in the way of new consoles. Mm. Yeah, you know, we've obviously we've got the Wii U now. We've got the Xbox One, we've got the PS4, we've got the Vita. The newest console from the look of it is this 3DS, the LL. Or... The uh, new shiny all spangling one that was announced, was it today? Well, it's been announced for a while. Hmm. Um, this is basically, rather than a, a big new next-gen handheld, this is just a, a refinement for the 3DS. So it's the same size as the XL. Mm-hmm. It has a second analog stick. So you've got better controls on games. And in the past, they've had to do an extra grip that yeah. gives you the second analysis of certain games. And Kid Icarus, I think, didn't use it in that way, but you can, mm. Resident Evil Revelation certainly did. Um, Smash Bros. you couldn't use it on, which is mad. So hopefully this will allow you to Remedy use it in that situation. That. Uh, but today, a lot of people woke up to a very exciting email. Mm. And I got the email, Rob. Oh. Right what now. email did you get, Bouncy? It says, Bouncy Ball. And I thought, mm-hmm. somebody knows me. Uh, you could be one of the first in Europe to own a new Nintendo 3DS. Now I thought, hang on a minute, I've got, I have two new mm-hmm. Nintendo 3DSs. Surely you don't mean the new Nintendo 3DS. And apparently it does, it, as, mm-hmm. as the email says. Dear Nintendo fan, we like to thank you, one of our most loyal customers, mm-hmm. for your support. I had an R4 card, by the way, Nintendo. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> to show our appreciation, we're offering you the chance to purchase new Nintendo 3DS now. Now, not a new Nintendo. Mm. They're actually uppercase this. So I have a feeling they're getting rid of the LL and they're calling it new Nintendo 3DS. Mm. And that's actually the name of it. We've kept it new. Yep. Which is like new Super Mario Brothers. New su- new new Nintendo metal. 3DS. Oh no, that's different. Because in the past, they've always <laughs> referred to it as the LL. But actually, if you look around... Um, tech gadget and sites like that, tech radar, and mm. receiver, they review it as the XL. They don't call it anything, they don't call yeah. it LL anymore. But Nintendo is specifically just saying new, and even on here, look, it's got like the amiibo. Mm. You can't see it at home if you've seen the amiibo sign. Yep. That's the same font they use for amiibo. So, I mean, new Nintendo 3DS, which is good because it's suggesting it's not too large, it's not mm. regular. Um, it has some improvements. Of course, it's got the the secondary thumbstick, as we described. Um, it has uh, near field communication built into mm-hmm. it, so you can use the Amiibo characters and potentially Skylanders characters in the future straight on the actual DS itself. Um, the screen is the same size as the XL, which is quite, I've seen mine, haven't you? It's quite yep. a large yep. screen. The 3D is now better view mm-hmm. angle, so you can actually turn it more to still see the 3D effect, which is a big thing yeah. for me in particular. Um, but also it has these cover plates. So a lot of people in the past have upgraded a 3DS to have a new design. Mm. So they've got like the Zelda one, which was in gold yep. or Pokemon. Mm. These ones have removable face plates. So you can just snap on a new set mm. and oh, have... That's quite cool. Just going to come. Because my daughter's got one, a uh, blue one, at her, well, her uncle. Yeah. Basically, it's a hand-me-down. Doesn't play it anymore. No. Does Annabelle want it? And yeah. She's a bit younger at the moment, but yeah. So, you yeah. know, she's got one of the sort of aqua blue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dresses. So, again, different iteration. Look, it's coloured. Ooh, by yeah. shiny. Yeah. So. And this is it. So, this one uh, comes with some different interchangeable mm. plates. So, the first one you get is uh, a white one with some Chinese writing, or Japanese writing on it, obviously, uh, which I'm guessing says, uh, hello, Nintendo fan, mm. or something like that. I don't know. I don't read Japanese. And I don't know, the problem is, that should be upside down on this picture, mm. because that's the lid opened up. So I'm guessing... So that, you might be translating it completely wrong. And then wrong. every time I turn the picture upside down, the iPad automatically changes yeah. the screen, so I don't know what I'm looking at. So this might say <laughs> something very rude when it's the wrong way around. Mm. I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you get that, but then you also get this rather sexy looking... And I'll just show Rob this. I think I've got it on my screen right Smash now. Smash Brothers... Case as well, mm-hmm. nice etched look. 
um, it comes with a, a charging cradle. You get a four mega, a four gigabyte um, memory card as well. The new Nintendo 3DS stylus, mm-hmm. which I'm guessing is the new Nintendo 3DS stylus, stylus. not just the new yeah. Nintendo 3DS that's, that's compatible with the new Nintendo 3DS. Um, and then yeah, so you get the the, the ambassador back, the ambassador front, the Smash Brothers front Ooh. and back, and it cost me 180 pounds to order one. Now I did think for a long while, oh, I could order that and just sell it. Oh, I, I bet there'd be people out there willing to pay a lot of money for this Ambassador mm. Edition 3DS. And then I thought, what a horrible, horrible thing to say. You capitalist like, bastard. There are a load of people who would probably die to have, well not die, mm. if they would, frankly, they don't deserve one. <laughs> but, um, it's a bit extreme. They would like really sell their grandmothers for this sort of thing. Uh, I've seen in the past, when, oh, and particularly just with the PS4 and the Xbox One, how much people are willing to pay on eBay mm. for a console that's rarely available. Now this... Ambassador Edition, theoretically, is available three months before the European release. Yeah. So it is a big deal to get one. So I thought, no, I'll order it. I ordered it today. It's on the way now. Mm. It should be here in about five days, which is quite exciting. Mm. I've just got to find the money in the next five days. <laughs> um, that's the advantage of having a shop, you see. Yes, yes. You can kind of get it in and it'll sit there in the stock room. And uh, I'll just pay an extra tenner. Mm. It's a sale. <laughs> uh, making profit from my own pocket that's the way to run a business but then obviously I went on to Twitter mm. just to have a look at uh, what people is is that how Keith Lemon says it oh, I don't know I do believe it I'm not going to say it on Twitter uh, I went on to Twitter mm. and uh, on there was a little thing in the trending topics mm. which obviously custom to me but it was the oh, yeah. new 3DS so I clicked on that Straight away, people have put them onto, um, onto eBay. Of course they have. £400. <laughs> yep. Which, I mean, frankly, I hope nobody pays, but I know if every single one of those will sell. Yep. That's the sad thing about it. Um, Nintendo really, uh, they, what they should do is kind of look very carefully at who they're sending these to and just delay the order, maybe. Well, the, the, the weird but, thing is, didn't they... Where's the... the let me just pull this up again. Um, this is on the Eurogamer. It's like, cause obviously, it came out. These emails have gone out. Mm. Obviously, you've got one. Yeah. And it was this whole... The emails were sent out to people who met certain criteria, but they've yeah. been a bit shady about what the criteria is. So I don't know if it's just that you signed up for the mail list and I didn't, or... No. Um, it, it's all from, a bit shady, and it's very strange. And as you say... In the past, this has happened in mm. the past, with the 3DS, I think they did it as well. Mm. And I think they also did it with the GameCube, or maybe the Wii. It was one of those... It's the stars. Mm. They, when you buy a Nintendo game, you get a code in there, a mm-hmm. scratch-off code, and you can redeem that on the website, and it gives you a stars balance, yep. which you can then use to get collectibles. Mm-hmm. Now, I've done that a lot, yep. and it does seem that a lot of people got confused because they thought it was if you were an ambassador. Now, if you bought the first 3DS when it came out, mm. about four months later, they knocked about 100 quid off the price. And as an apology, they said to all those original early adopters, well, you're an ambassador for the 3DS. Here's, I think, 23 games. They're all yeah. like downloadable uh, NES and Game Boy mm. Advance games. You can have all of these. You're an ambassador. And you've got a little kind of certificate thing. Yeah. So a lot of people assumed that because they were an ambassador, they were they automatically would get in. This. Yeah. Then there are people obviously thinking, well, I've always got every other email address, email mm. from Nintendo. Why have I not got this one? And I've bought all these games. Why have I not got one? But it does, spiral, it yeah. does seem. Very clear because when you go to buy it, you have to sign in through Club Nintendo. Right. So it's not like it's just you're on a mailing list mm. because you bought the 3DS. Yeah. It's because you've been a very active member mm. of Club Nintendo. And for me, that's, I mean, I have been. I can't mm-hmm. deny that. I've got the coin from the year of Luigi. I've got Pikmin key rings. I've got a lovely soft pouch at the moment. Mm. My current 3DS is sitting here. <laughs> it was for it's a family podcast. Minutes. <laughs> yeah, <it's clean. laughs> I've got the Animal Crossing soundtrack I've got the Super Mario Galaxy soundtrack on CD I've got all sorts I've got yep. from redeeming mm. and then saving over I own a Wii U I've redeemed points for that and registered that console so I mean if you were to look at me as a Nintendo it's weird I mean they say loyal Nintendo fan and I think actually I own or have owned every Nintendo mm. console since the Game Boy so I can't really say that I'm not. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. It, it was just the, the kind of this weird, thing, shady I would, nature. I, would, of... I wouldn't consider myself a Nintendo mm. fan. Like, because we were talking earlier about how a lot of the top ten lists of 2014 mm. were. And this wasn't on the show. It was just Rob and I, mm. and we forgot to mention it in the 2014 episode. <laughs> but a lot of sites did choose a Wii U games mm. 
in the top three. Yeah. I think so. Top, top two in several cases. So, yeah. Bayonetta 2, yep. uh, Smash Brothers, and... Mario Kart 8, 8 was game of the year for several. Now, I own Mario Kart 8. Mm. It's not that much different to any other Mario Kart. I had a player when I came around before. It's, it's very fun. shiny. Yep. It's, it's Mario, Mario Kart. <laughs> but it's not as good fun as Sonic All-Stars Racing mm. Transformed, which I think is a faster and more exciting mm. game. But it's Mario Kart. Everybody yeah. knows you. You can give it to anybody and they know how to play it. Mm. And so it got there, and it was interesting because the Wii U has got a very, very small user base. Mm. It's done very well this Christmas. Uh, they've, they've dropped the price there now yeah. to about 199, 200 pounds. That certainly helped. Mm. I've sold more Wii U consoles this Christmas than any other console. Yeah. Which I did find surprising because mm. <laughs> I wouldn't have stopped them. Yeah. But we got them in. And they did a couple of really good bundles. One of them was um, Nintendo Land, Wii U Party, and an extra controller. Mm. So it was for families yeah. to play games. Then they did a bundle which was America 8, the premium console, which is mm-hmm. aimed at the more core gamers, they call yeah. it. Which I think it's a horrible term. But mm, does. But they love the having these pigeonholes. Yeah. It's like always black. No, it's got a big hard drive. And we'll put the Mario game in there. Yeah. yeah. The current big Mario <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and they've sold. They've sold mm. ridiculously well. And uh, I, I find it quite kind of encouraging that. I mean, Bayonetta 2 is on my list of things to get. Mm. The downside is Wii U games tend to hold their value. Nintendo games generally, when they're good first party mm. games, obviously that's not necessarily a first party game, it's exclusive. Mm. Uh, they hold it. Uh, Lego City Undercover, which is one I really want. I'm a yeah. fan of Lego. It's still 45 to 50 mm. pounds to find because I, they just did make the quantity big, early yeah, on yeah. and they haven't re released it. So I'm going to have to pay through the nose for that at some mm. point. I keep hoping I'm going to spot it. Somebody will trade it in at work yeah. or I'll see it somewhere on sale. But, you know, I, I wouldn't have said at any point that if you were to say to me, what's your favourite console? I wouldn't have said the 3DS. But my 3DS is almost always with me. Mm. I adore Street Pass. I've talked about it on every other podcast I've ever been on. Mm. I mean, long course days, Hamhock and I, the first time we met in person, we were playing Street Fighter 2 against each other yeah. on 3DS. That was, I, I think... They'd come out in March, this was September, mm. and we were like just enjoying playing that near a swanky tramp. Mm. It was uh, it, it was a console that I've just kept going. You saw me checking the street passes at your game, mm. how many people had them, and how excited I was about getting on my jigsaw pieces. Yeah. And I've never been away. Now, Tomodachi Life, I've had a whole year mm. of a little digital version of me in my pocket, so I just annoy you every now and then, and he annoys me, and then he's back in the pocket again. Yeah. And yet, if I come home, my first thought is, oh, I'll play a bit of Tomodachi Life. Mm. The, the 3DS is almost like a passive part of my game. Yeah. And I've got a Wii U now, which, you know, I've got Mario Kart, I've got Zombie U, mm. and I've got New Super Mario Brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also now got Nintendo Land and Part U, because uh, the kids wanted something to play. But that's one that I need to get more controllers. So <laughs> it's, for them to get the most, I've got to spend a lot Spend more money again, yeah. Which, for me, I just can't justify, which is weird, because the games themselves are really good, solid mm. games that, I mean, Nintendo Party games, you know they're going to be played, yeah. and they're going to be great. And I've got three kids and me, so it's the mm. perfect layout of... Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm bigger than all them, so I'm going to have the tablet controller. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um, so when I got this email, I did... I, did mm. I have to say, I was surprised, but it does make sense for some of the people. Mm. It does make me sad that so many people rush to eBay, but that is the nature, unfortunately, yeah. of people. Um, but hopefully when it arrives, we will be able to do an unboxing. Mm. Oh, my first <laughs> ever unboxing video, which <laughs> promise to you guys is going to be great. That's the people listening. Okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't suddenly seeing double, which is what Sam probably looking a little bit confused. Going, Guys, there's only one of me and a teddy bear. I don't know who you're talking to. That teddy bear, uh, if you, um, actually, if I just get this cushion, I'm going to show Rob a secret. This teddy bear is strategic in place. It's like a cane. Covers that hole in the wall. Oh. <laughs> that hole was caused by my housemate, oh. who was moving a sofa and didn't want to wait. And she dropped the sofa and it went straight into the wall. So we have a teddy that when we have guests around, she knew we were recording, oh. place a teddy there. Yeah. And I honestly didn't want you to see the hole. Definitely didn't want the podcast oh, listeners yeah, right. She's never so, let me see a hole before. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that's a nice secret there. But yeah, so we'll be able to do an unboxing mm-hmm. video. And I'll be able to play it. Because it does take all the 2DS, mm-hmm. uh, 2DS, all the DS, all the 3DS games. But there will be games that will only work on the new the one. LL. So I, I can't get this, this new Nintendo mm-hmm. 3DS. It's weird. I like it. I think it's funny. Mm. Have you got the new Nintendo 3DS? Which one's that? The new one? No. The new, new Nintendo 3DS. <laughs> well, there's two... Four candles. 
It is. It's going to be very confusing. Um, but at least when people come in and say, "I'd like to buy the new Nintendo 3DS," they'll be saying exactly the right product name. <laughs> but Nintendo then you can go, this one. I'm afraid you can't. Yeah. You're not an executive member of Nintendo like me." Well, this is it. I, I am <laughs> going to have this in my pocket at all times. So when people go, oh, "Have you heard about that thing?" I can go, "Oh, oh yeah, it's like the it is. <laughs> dodgy men. Do you want to buy a watch?" Opening the lid, just going, "I'm the ambassador. <laughs> oh, I'm really spoiling you." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> For this new Nintendo, I'm really spoiling myself. Come with like six rare Roche mm. for everybody. It is the Ambassador Edition. I um I wanted a Commander version. I would <laughs> love that. Just like Mass Effect colours and or well, just the N7 well, logo and so blazing. Spray paint down being cute. Well, the interchange will play. So they said they're going to make mm. plain ones so people can customise them, which is, um, I'm going to have a lot of cost. Oh, well. Faceplate made up. That's, uh, that's I've got a guy who does vinyls who's going to. Wrap a whole vinyl set around it. I still haven't got around to spray paint my Xbox controller. I bought blue and yellow paint. Uh, blue and yellow oh, paint. Good. Paint. Do it oh, in the yeah. fallout. Yeah, exactly. I still haven't got around to it yet. Mm. Yeah. Did you know? I don't know if you're into pop vinyls at all. Uh, I'm not, though. No. no, they're doing a range of uh, Fallout and Skyrim pop vinyls. And maybe I am now. I know. Yeah. When I read it, there's because I, I, anybody who knows anything about me knows, as a general rule, I don't like pop vinyls. Mm. Haven't done, I don't understand the fascination in them. I would rather have a really good detailed figure. Hmm. But then I saw the Walking Dead ones and I kind of like the little zombies. Yeah. I mean, so, we've got one at home, we've got Darth Vader, but I'm not yeah. particularly inclined to no. go out and buy more. So I got, I got him and then I was given Slimer for Christmas. Hmm. So I then wanted Stay Puft to go with yeah. him. And I will get the Ghost of to go with him. And my partner is massively Breaking Bad. So it's so starting to spiral out of control her, already. <laughs> the Breaking Bad ones. But she also really likes hmm. Black Future. So I got the DeLorean with yep. mine in it. And then we'll have to get Doc to finish that off. But then I also really like Arrested Development, mm. and I've done those, so I'm going to have to get those. This is how they get you. So. Well, this is it. <laughs> what I've decided is I will only buy the figures for a series of something mm. that I really love, where there isn't any other option of getting mm. a figure. Like, Fallout at the moment, the only figure I'm going to be able to get is the Vault Boy Bobbleheads, because they did the mini ones. Mm. That you could I've got the Bobblehead, for. because I've so still you, got the lunchbox. Yeah, you get the one in the lunchbox. You that can one. get a Brotherhood of Steel figure, which came with one of the other... Yeah. Versions of yeah. Fallout Three. It's really rubbish figure. I don't think it is I've a bit. seen it in real life. Uh, I've seen it's it on eBay <laughs> for like fifteen quid, whatever it yeah. is. I mean, I want one, but they did. I mean, Bethesda did do an official range of the actual. You know the the, the ball heads you collect mm. in the game. Yeah, yeah, you can actually get those in little sealed boxes, and you didn't know which one you were going to get. Mm. Um, so it seems like they might be doing Pit Boys. Yes, no, Vault Boy, isn't it? Vault Boy. Uh, uh, the pit boys thing on your hand. Yeah, boys sorry, of course it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it so might be you just get ball boys yeah. instead of the actual characters. I'd love a super mutant, mm. but I don't know how that works scale wise. Mm. But I really want a couple of the, uh, particularly the one with the big wrench. I quite like him. And mm. the scientist one with the glasses. You could do a forks. And, and, be good. and Skyrim. I think they have done those mighty mugs. I think they did do one of him yeah, with the um, dragon ball with a helmet. So I'd like. Dragon Ball helmet, mm. Skyrim helmet, and I quite like one of the grey wizardy people up in the throat. Mm. So I could just get him shouting off a mountain and throw him down a hill. Go, <laughs> look at him fall. See, um, difficult yeah. with things like Fallout is it's almost a little bit niche in a sense. How far do you go with it? Well, this is it. Because you, your market's only so big. I think with things like Breaking Bad, they are probably well, more you say that, popular. <laughs> but they've done like widely. Frankenstein Jr., which is a mm. really obscure Hanna Barbera. Mm. Probably, you know, I've heard the name. I, yeah. I think I may have seen it as a child. Kind of, but, yeah. kind of sci-fi thing. And they did him. Mm. They've done um, Jack Skellington for Night Before mm. Christmas. But then they've also done... You see, there's like, kind of a whole, like, I'll say, I'll say underground subculture of, of uh, Night Before Christmas, but, you know, you need to get stuff in the Disney store. We've got Jack Skellington yeah. head cookie. Jack. I, 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 a, always, there, is, there is a market for it. always that. annoyed me when that became reclaimed by Disney because it was originally mm. released by Touchstone. Mm. Uh, Henry Selleck film that then had Tim Burton's name stamped on it as mm. if he was the key guy and and then it did really well and Disney kind of went that's mm, ours mm. <laughs> they just sort of clawed it back changed the title on it put the Disney, Walt Disney's mm. Night Before Christmas and then changed get rid of the touch doing like and they pushed it back out mm. and suddenly Disney's always full of things which little goffy kids could go in and buy a Jack Skellington wallet for £9 and be all edgy because they've mm. got and I, I love I love for Christmas. Yeah. I think it's a ridiculously mm. good film, but I hate the Disneyfication mm. and the profiteering of it. Yeah, like, I, can, I liked yeah, it when it was like for a while. I had a, a pin badge which was a metal pin badge with mm. a Night Before Christmas logo. And then underneath were three little glow in the dark Jack Skellington heads. 
pulling all different faces. And I used to love it. And then one day I went past a 15 year old kid. He went, oh, they've got them in the Disney shop, three quid. And I just thought, that was ages ago. And now it's mass marketed. Yeah. Uh, I don't ever want to wear it again. So I gave it to a friend of mine and said, yeah, you know, this. She was really pleased. And I was glad to have got rid of the bloody thing. Um, but yeah, so uh, I forgot what we've been talking about now. You're no, your swanky uh, new. Pop vinyls. Yeah, pop, uh, not pop vinyls. Uh, what was I thinking? We're still talking about your swanky new 3DS. Well, we were sort of. We were sort of. We were getting off of it. Um, so yeah, so that's that's going to be the unboxing. Mm. Uh, we'll, we'll do that, and I'll keep you posted on how that goes along. I mean, if it suddenly doesn't appear, then I should also complain <laughs> quite vocally. But I am <laughs> looking forward to doing a couple of videos uh, of that. I did think, you know, and obviously if you if you're listening and you would like to donate towards the 3DS NL unboxing video, I'm not saying to the console, I'm saying so we can get this up, maybe uh, get like a hire a HD view. Oh, I'm sorry, we're never going to hire a HD video camera. Just use the iPad. Don't worry about yeah. donating for that. We're going to donate to help keep the iPads, iPads, laptops with cameras built in. Yeah. The 21st Twitter century. Twitter. I've, I've got Kinect too. Because yeah. it's Twitch streaming. It's good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so don't donate for that. If you're going to donate, donate to just keep us running because we do have running costs. Uh, not huge running costs, I'll be honest. I mean, you could donate like £2 each and we'd be set for the rest of the year. So don't feel like we're, we're begging you for money. I'm not asking you for anything. Just if you're in a position where you could, that would be nice. Uh, so yeah, um, I think, so yeah, we were talking about Nintendo. Well, that's Ooh. where it came from. So Nintendo are going to launch this console this year. And it's the only real big launch for a tech from any of the companies. Yeah. Nintendo will use a good start to the year with boosted sales, lower prices, and a really good cluster of games all at the same time. Sony have kind of been edging their bets with this PlayStation Now service, which obviously we've been mm. seeing this week a rough idea of what the pricing is going to be, which looks like it's going to be about 15 to 20 pounds a month. That is what the suggestion seems for to be. For over 100 PS3 games. Now, Netflix is always going to be the big comparison. Mm. But what I would, what I always say to people when they say, oh, that sounds a lot of money, 20 pounds a month, I would say, if you look at Netflix, you're paying what, six ninety nine a month now, I think it is. Because I think it's five ninety nine mm. for regular, and if you didn't get it recently, you've now got to pay a little bit more. So if we say it's five ninety nine, mm-hmm. but you're getting a product that you can buy quite cheaply. You can like rent these movies for a pound, two pound. The games you can't. The games if you wanted to get Shadow Colossus Collection, if you wanted to get Resistance Three, you're gonna have to pay five, ten pounds each. Mm. Most people won't have the option to rent these games. Uh, it will give people who probably didn't even play the PS3 huge library yeah. of games. Um, so I, I don't think it's necessarily bad value. If mm. you're on a budget, you've got a lot of gaming. I think the other thing is potentially it makes the PS4 more attractive to people who haven't upgraded, yeah. maybe from a PS3 or 360 yet, because yeah. you've suddenly got this additional, especially if you're a 360 gamer. Yeah. Because you're already. Most likely, well, most people probably maybe pay for gold. Yeah. So you're now saying, well, I pay 35 quid a year anyway. Yeah. So it's not a massive stretch. Plus, I get this big back catalogue yeah. of games. So I haven't got to go out and buy a heap of PS4 games. I can buy a PS4, a couple of games I want. You know, yeah. um, was it Last of Us Left Behind, was it? And things like that. You could pick up a couple of games you want for the PS4 for yeah. whatever deal is on. And then you can still get a whole heap of the games yeah. without. Yeah, you know, for the cost no, of me, I think that's that's, yeah. that's the appeal. I mean, it's not a, an annual subscription; mm. it's monthly. Yeah. So you, if you say there's like it's not worth it this time kinda... of year, how many new games coming out? Mm. So you have nice. suddenly you'd be able to just go. Well, I tell you what, I'd normally have spent forty quid on a game. I spent twenty quid a, a month of yeah. PS3 games. If you don't like it, by the end of it, cancel it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's not like they're kind of locking you in for as long time. Mm. Obviously, they'll probably be saying that once you've downloaded it, you'll only get it like, as you do with PlayStation yeah. Plus. You'll only be able to access it while you've got an mm. active membership. Fair enough. Yeah, that's the same yeah. with most things. You can't, yeah, well, yeah. So you use mobile data. Mm. You can't drive a car. I've got fuel in it. You've got to have some sort yeah, of yeah, value. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think, as I say, in a game, in a time where we've got kind of 45 pound games, mm. I think it's very often the people who are complaining most, the people who've probably already bought these games the first time around, and they're thinking, well, anyway, I, that's only worth like three quid now. Yeah. And they're adding them and thinking, well, if you'll play that all month, I could have just played it. Well, you can't do that in PS4. Mm. If you've got the PS3 and you've already got the games, then you don't really need the service. Because you've still got the console and the games. Hmm. If you haven't, it's, as you're saying, it's brilliant entry level. Hmm. And also, with New Uncharted on the way, it's a good hmm. way to play the previous three. Yeah. Uh, with Killzone, you can play, well, if they put the PS2 versions on, hmm. you can go back and do Killzone's... Potentially Mass Effect as well with the 
next Mass Effect installment yeah. on the horizon. Well, there is talk of there being a HD collection. Um, oh, that's something you mentioned, actually, is. yeah. Well, so, options. And also, but, uh, mm. something else that was kind of, um, that has been talked about for a while, but the uh, Gears of War mm. um, console bundle yeah. with all three Gears of War games remastered, mm. which I would quite like to see. Because there's a lot of really nice lighting in their games already. Mm. Um, I'd, I'd like to see what the Xbox One could do with it. Yep. Um, but, I mean, maybe that's something Microsoft are planning this year. That's yep. going to be their kind of ramping up to Gears of War, mm. which won't be this year, because we know this year's Halo's year. Well, all about Halo for the next year, year really. is going to be, it's going to have to be Gears of War, because they said there's going to be two, three years development time. Mm. That would sit quite nicely. Yeah, so, obviously, we've got Halo. Mm. Uh, have you had a chance to have a look at the Guardians beta? I haven't yet, no. Um, funny enough, uh, Emma and I played Combat Evolved the other night. Yeah. And it's strange going back to Combat Evolved, having played various... So, the anniversary versions. Yeah, on the 360, yeah. 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 Um, and, and it's strange going back. Really strange, because, obviously, uh, it's just a, a, I suppose, a repainting of, of the original so yeah. it's got all the original gameplay with yeah. nice shinier graphics and lots it, of rust yeah it's really weird <laughs> it's really weird going back to it because it feels the controls which are so revolutionary at the time feel kind of restrictive mm. it's like where's the sprint button yeah. like, oh, exactly. <laughs> when i because i never played halo one or two mm. i only got into xbox with 360 so i my first halo game was halo three so i really i had kind of a very Evolved, <laughs> just to use the word, but I did have an evolved version of what was started with Halo 1. Yeah. I got the anniversary edition of Halo, but because I didn't have any of this, this, uh, the nostalgia, mm. all I was left with was, in my mind, a stripped down, clunky version of Halo yeah. 3. I want the Master Chief collection. Mm. I, I quite badly want that, because uh, that's going to give me a chance to play Halo 2, yeah. which I've, I've heard is one of the best in the series, mm. and I never. Guaranteed, but also the multiplayer from all four games being yep. clumped together, plus a web series directed by or produced by Ridley Scott as well. So there's a lot of reasons to be there. Now I've got the beta, mm. not because because usually you can only get it if you've got the master collection. Mm. But I'm in what's classed as the console preview program mm-hmm. for Xbox One, so I get features to try out, and part of that was access to the beta. Mm. I would say having not really played Halo Two, but talking to people who have. They said the gameplay is the closest to Halo 2's mm. multiplayer that they've ever seen. Is Red versus Blue. Mm. The mode they were showing off is Slayer. I think it's 4v4. Probably, yeah, and then they normally go. Yeah. Some and it's a very small arena. Really. And it's a, a weird one because mm. you kind of, around the outside, you're at this kind of circular pod room which has got a different weapon in. Mm. And so that room has a path that goes down to that one and a path goes to the next one. So they kind of loop over each other. Yeah. So you can kind of come up into a room and down into a room at the same time. And then centre, you've got like a battle arena. Mm. And it's not very forgiving. It, it is like if you're a, a twitchy Halo player, mm. that's the perfect mode for you. Yeah. For people who've not really are not really into that mm. or into the the bigger battles with the, the vehicles like the ghosts yeah. and the rape and stuff, for me I wanted that. Because mm. I'm playing the, the shiny new Halo Five yeah. one player. And I'm playing what's essentially a really polished version, stripped right down to the bare minimum. Mm. It's a close quarters. Yeah. And it's and it just didn't allow me to mm. sell in too much. They have said they're going to have some more modes before the yeah. uh, play rounds. Hopefully, you'll get a chance to mm. let you go on it um, before we do the next episode. But uh, it is very yeah. shiny. I mean, it is it's Halo. Mm. It's un- undeniably Halo. Yeah. Uh, but I think maybe they kind of went with that mode because of the nostalgia. Because people who bought it probably play it, bought Mastery Collections, mm. so they're going to be the diehard. Yeah. I mean, Halo fans. 2 was, from a multiplayer point of view, was such a key yeah. game. For first person shooters, yeah. perhaps gaming as a whole. Yeah. So it was so popular for so long, really. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it lasted and lasted. Um, well, they did a second standalone disc for DLC mm. for the multiplayer, didn't they? So yeah. at that point, it was not necessarily the downloadable side mm. of it. But I remember that. I've got it, I think, in my Xbox collection. I've never played it, but it sits there. Yeah. And there was a tin version as well that had both in. But um, yeah, carry on, sorry. But, uh, but yeah, uh, it, it, it's. I'm more of a, an open o- open field type multiplayer. Yeah. I prefer the open yeah. battles where you can you can find those corners to for you people snipers. Yeah. Frustrating as they are, it's nice to have but these different more, styles. It's a battlefield then. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, they do say it is an arena, mm. and it feels like it. It yeah. feels like it would be a nice to see more. I think if yeah. So hopefully they'll land mm. that in, and there'll be a good cup of gamers. Yeah. I, re- I really used to like the um, when we had to capture the skull, mm. and they grab that. Yeah. 
I used to like those kind of things. Mm. I used to like just charging around with a yeah. warthog. I want to do that. I want to see mm. a warthog and how it handles and yeah. plays. And but I mean, Halo Five obviously is going to be a biggie. Mm. Um, Halo Four was a, a great start for a new trilogy. Yeah, um, and I'm looking forward to see what they go, go through. Mm. I think obviously maybe Microsoft this year their big thing is to put out some games mm. it's because they. They started off saying Xbox One, the entertainment console. It's, yeah. And it, it lost them a lot of mm. respect. That alongside their, you don't own our games, and we've done all these deals with these American companies that you're never going to see anything of mm. because you're in the UK. But you're paid the same for your gold. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to have yeah, any things with license. Whereas Sony were very much, we're about the games. Mm. But that said, and I say this as someone who has had the choice of whichever console we've wanted, mm. I'm not that impressed with Sony's games. Mm. of late yeah. they're very good at downloadable indie games they're very supportive mm. of that kind of area of gaming and I love that mm. but I can play the same games that were on PS4 on my Vita yeah the same visuals mm. but I can have the, them handy the other, the other slight problem you've got is a lot of the games at the moment are on both yeah Destiny's on both yeah uh, Titan Falls on both I remember right no 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 no, 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 no. sorry um, Titan 2 is going right to sorry um, I stand corrected but you, there were a lot of games that were on you know, you could get on both. Yeah. A lot of the bigger titles yeah, were cross platform. Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty, yeah, Call of Duty is a perfect example. Of biggest franchises better. are cross platform. Mm. And so, they always, always will be. Yeah, and that's maybe the difference that comes in this year. We, we kind of said one of the things we want to look at as part of this episode was, you know, which company do we think will do best this year? Well, yeah. it really depends on what games they put out. Yeah. And as you said, maybe this is the year that Microsoft starts pushing the gaming side of the console which, rather than this all encompassing home yeah. entertainment hub that. The vibe, but if you look at the way they launch year. Sunset Overdrive, mm. I mean that was a big thing. So yeah. that the makers of I think it was Ratchet and Clank, yeah, Ratchet mm. and Clank. Uh, the makers of those mm. have done this ballsy shooter that yeah. is everything that was mm. Jet Set Radio mixed with Borderlands mixed yeah. with sort of the big fun, yeah. brash, loud, yeah, Saints Row, all that kind of thing, all in one game. And most I did just like give it. They gave every access to the game for twenty four hours, mm. so it wasn't like you had to buy it. You yeah. could play it for twenty four hours. Get achievements on it. Hmm. Play multiplayer together. Whatever you want to do, and it is things like that hmm. that kind of said actually. Right, so I'm starting to realise that hmm. they've lost some ground. Uh, they're giving some good games away with games of gold yeah. again. They've they've been doing through this. I mean, the whole idea of dropping the paywall for certain elements hmm. of Destiny in the past that would have been completely locked down. Yeah, but obviously the PlayStation has a thing where as part of their service on the PS4, you can have stuff where you share the play. Mm. So with Far Cry 4, for example, say we both had a PS4, mm-hmm. I had Far Cry, you didn't. You could actually join my game in co-op. Yeah, I've seen, and play seen these talks about the game. Yeah. But you can also play a demo version, so like two hours of the game mm. yourself. So you can join mine or play the whole game mm. separately, and that's like this game sharing thing. So I think Microsoft are now looking at a way of trying mm. to kind of compete with that a little bit, um, inviting people in. I mean, Nintendo have been doing it for years. Yeah. You, one of you's got a DS, one of you's got a Game Boy, you can play multiplayer mm. together. Uh, all consoles should do it. Really. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the point I made on the last episode about Destiny. How enough. do you not have cross platform yeah. even between PS3 and 4 and 360 and Xbox One? Well, yeah. How do you not have those yeah. cross platform I, mean, I remember that when games. the Xbox One was announced, they were saying about, oh, you'd be able to Skype your friends and mm. talk. Well, you can, can, but that's I'll not. Skype from my phone I if I want, want to. I want party chat and in game play. Mm. That's what I want. I don't want to talk to my friends while they're in a completely <laughs> different game. I want to talk to my friends <laughs> while we're in the same game. That's yeah. why I talk to them. Mm. It was just like distracting when they're playing. It is distracting, and, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think Microsoft are, go- are going to be a big thing about games. Mm. Sony obviously are going to show off Project Morpheus, mm-hmm. which is their kind of immersive reality. So, did you get a chance to try the the other the other headset, the o- Oculus? Oculus. Did you get a chance to try that? I haven't tried it. Um, I think. Where was it? I saw it. It was just a massive queue. Yeah, so it, it, it tends to go on a very queue. You have yeah. to kind of find a little indie game normally to try and get hold mm. of it. Uh, I've, I've had a go on that, and I've tried um, a little bit on the on the the, 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 the Gear VR, mm. the, the Galaxy kind of run one, which is going to allow you to basically slot one of their phablets yeah. into it, and that becomes a screen, mm. uh, which is well keep costs down, mm. and theoretically could allow a lot of different devices yeah. to be used. Uh, so I've sort of tried that a little bit, and I've tried Oculus. I'm really excited to see Sony's version mm. because if anybody are going to chuck a load of money at it, yeah. it will be Sony. 
because mm. I <sighs> like that technology. But I'm not sold on the technology. No, I'm itself. not. That's the thing. Like there are some games where I sit there and I think, I mean, like Mirror's Edge. Mm. I would have adored to have played Mirror's Edge with an immersive reality. Mm. Just that feeling of being on top of a building. Yeah. But then stuff that's really quick paced, and and I wouldn't want that. Mm. So it's like kind of if I was standing on a mountain in Skyrim, I'm being able to kind of just look out and see the world in front of me. Mm. I just be able to look around. That would have been incredibly immersive. But the mm. game's not visually close enough to reality to convince me. Yeah, exactly. Whereas with Mirror's Edge, it had this weird, kind of glossy, almost photoreal mm. look in certain places. Would have been very better. Great. So mm. I think the two have to cross over. I know Fireproof that did Room, uh, yeah. they're doing a film called Omega Agent, which is just, you're a jetpack mm. uh, spy flying around the city. And they were showing it off at Eurogame. We're on Oculus, but it's going to be released exclusively for the gear. And, uh, that one, because you're in a jetpack, when mm. you look down, you're seeing straight down. Yeah. And that's exactly what it should be. It's like how handheld consoles work better when you do a handheld game for them. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It has to have the right products. It can't just be shoot on thing, yeah, boom, Gears of War now in VR. Mm. No. Maybe have VR missions, mm. like they had in Metal Gear Solid. Imagine that, where you're actually in VR. Yeah. That would work. But um, as a piece of technology, I think it's going to be too expensive to catch on to mm. that level, but also I think people are going to struggle with playing a long, big game. It's going to have to be short experiences that don't allow yeah. you to get too... Go the problem is then, of course, you, you come back to the cost because it's got to be worth the investment. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and a good friend of mine yeah. has got the dev... He's bought a dev kit for mm. Oculus Rift 2. Um, so I'll speak to him and we'll mm. get you hooked up to it and uh, we'll, we'll let you go through. There's a couple of games mm. I've got in the Steam library, so we'll hopefully... So it it'll be interesting to see your yeah. take on it because I said it's it, from the outside you kind of look at it and think there's no way that'll work mm. if you put the right game on oh yeah, totally well, yeah. <laughs> I mean I remember uh, Dr. Hamhock and I a year ago he played a game called Montague's Mount mm. which is quite a slow paced exploration game mm. and he was playing that Rock Rift and he was sat down to start with but felt he had to stand up because mm. it was confusing his mind that he could look down and see a pair of legs that are standing up but know that he wasn't standing up. Yeah. And he was kind of moving around, and he was like kind of doing that with his hand, even mm. though there was nothing there, because the controller was his input. Mm. So if there was a kind of way of force feedback, which they are working on, yeah. but for him, it was like his body was reacting, because he, what he's seeing didn't match what he was doing. Mm. That was quite interesting. So I, I've, um, well, that's how I'll be interested to see how he <laughs> play on with that. Mm. But he owes me a favour, so I'll get on to him, and we'll hopefully get that running, and then that'll make for a good... Mm future episode yeah. get some videos done for that um so yeah so that's kind of sony i think the the playstation now plus their kind of refinement mm. i mean it's really it's the kind of the year where the console should come into their own the body you yeah. should know what they're going to be i mean playstation mm. had a very juddery start it took about four years for them to get the online side sorted mm. out the games that people wanted to play sorted out so now we know what to expect from sony mm. but how quickly can they capitalize on yeah. it yeah Microsoft have got the money. I mean, they've paid for Tomb Raider to be exclusive mm. form this year, so I think that'll be an interesting thing at the end of the year. Um, but of course, E3 is coming up, and mm. what what can we expect? You know, it's it's an interesting one. Like normally, yeah. you know, those new consoles are going to this. I mean, mm. Are they going to announce Gears War? Mm. Is that going to be the big announcement this year? Is it going to be that we'll finally get Fallout Four? I hope so. You know, <laughs> that's so that's, that's the one I'm, I'm it's waiting. It's not going to be console specific because mm. I can't imagine it not being on both, but at the same time, if one console managed to say we've exclusively signed Fallout 4, that's going to be a, a big yeah. deal. Um, and that's, I, I think that might be the big thing of E3 this year is console exclusivity deals. Yeah. Because Tomb Raider we've was, seen before, Tomb Raider was a previous shot. E3s. Yeah. Well, normally it's DLC. Mm. Like Assassin's Creed gets extra DLC on yeah. the PlayStation or Battlefield got extra mm. or early maps mm. and stuff. We see it all the time, yeah. But Tomb Raider was the first where for a long while big franchise was mm. exclusive that was formerly multi-platform yeah so i would quite like to see so the other thing with tomb raider is maybe it's just me but i always associated that more as a playstation yeah. game than well, an xbox game most people had it on the ps1 mm. exactly and, yes you know i mean i'll see tomb raider legends and underworld mm. i think were only on 360 and mm. then they came out as part of the hd collection on ps yeah so they kind of in the past, it's kind of started to come towards the three season, mm. and then went back. I mean, obviously, it's not a permanent exclusivity, no. but the first Tomb Raider of the reboot series was 
brilliant. Mm. I don't know if you've had a chance. It's to one of the it. ones that is part of my pile of shame. So. If, um, if I might go on as a listener and <laughs> recommend you play that because it is genuinely mm. a great game, um, and it, it felt right as a reboot. Yeah. It felt right as a, a prequel as well. It feels like it sits right. The character's yeah. right, and I want more of that. Like, I want to know what the character yeah. happens to her next, and because she went on a, the, a journey, yeah. as most people do in games, in massive inverted commas, mm. sponsored by M- McDonald's. But um, she genuinely did, mm. and the psychological effect of it was apparent in the first game, and the second game seems to hinge very much on it. Mm. So I want to play that game, so I'm glad I've got the Xbox yeah. One, because I'm being able to do so. But for a lot of people who, through no fault of their own, have mm. got a console now that they can't get the game that they really yeah. want. So I think Sony might have to sort of do a similar act and just mm. say, right, we're going to get uh, Saints Row 5. Yeah. We'll be just with us. And then Microsoft, will, there'll be a grab for some mm. big franchises. And I'd like that. I loved it when it was Nintendo versus Sega and you yeah. had like, well, Mortal Kombat on the Sega had bullets. Mm. And the Nintendo ones just had like green goo and yeah. black. And I, I, I like the fact that there was, you could only get this game on the system, only on PlayStation, mm. only on Xbox. It should be. This yeah. is what these consoles. This is why there is. Two. That's kind of what what some of their strengths are as well. Because we talked about Halo, and you've also mentioned Uncharted. Yeah, and they're big titles respectively for their yeah. consoles, and they're good games. When people come <laughs> in my shop and they say which is the best console, mm. my first question is, well, what games do you want to play? Mm. Because it doesn't matter. The the infrastructure of a console is actually completely irrelevant. Yeah. It's do you want to play Gran Turismo? Do you want to play Uncharted? Mm. Do you want to play Killzone? We don't have any choice what console. You're yeah. Play. Do you want to play Dead Rising Rising 3? Do you want to play Forza? I mean, that's why I went with the Xbox One, because I really want Dead Rising 3. I was very excited Mm. by owning a new Forza game, even though it wasn't a great thing. But I knew what's coming. I knew there was going to be a new Gears game. I knew there was going to be a new Halo Mm. game. I knew there was going to be a new Fable game. Yeah, all these things I want Mm. on, and they're on the Xbox. So I'd like to see not just kind of this kind of stereo, not stereo, the the generic. Mm -hmm own brand titles, yeah. but I now want to see ones that have been kind of floating around in the middle suddenly get scooped over. A bit of a land grab sort of Yeah, thing. I'd like that. And I, the thing is, it's, it's, we're living in a time where not every family, I mean, obviously we're in a position mm. where we're working and we have families to mm. support, but if we were 10 years younger, we'd probably be in a position where we own both consoles. Mm. Working with no responsibility, you could afford it. If you're a full-time gamer... Mm. And that's very often that's the case that most people have. I know a lot of people who have both consoles. Mm. So exclusivity doesn't matter. Mm. Because if you want the good game, you buy that console. Yeah. It's not like you're, you, you're told, well, you own an Xbox One. You will mm. never touch a PlayStation 4 <laughs> as long as you live. Mm. That's, that's a choice. You can make the choice. And that's changed a lot in recent years. Because yeah. I think prior to that, as you said, it was Sega versus Nintendo. Yeah. Well, it was or, so prohibitively expensive. Mm. But also, there weren't really adults buying the consoles as there are now. Mm. It was a time where you had to ask your parents yeah. to get you a console. I mean, home computers was more the yeah. adult side. You yeah. had like parents would own, or you had an uncle that owned an Amiga or something yeah. like that. But or even console, PC, sort of games like Doom and things. Yeah. it's But mm. as a console thing, it was always, we had to pick one. Mm. You couldn't have both. That would just be insane. Yeah. What do you want for Christmas? And then uh, what happened that was, the, you had, because I had a Master System, that mm. was the first console that I mm. bought. And then, the Mega Drive, well, I could use my Master System games on it. It had backwards compatibility. Yeah. I could, it was brilliant. It had the same games mm. on it. So I stayed with Sega right up until the Dreamcast. Mm. And at that point, I started to work. So I then had a Dreamcast, did a GameCube, did a mm. PS1, did a PS2, and these were all playing at the same time. Then it moves forward, and I'm like, well, I want the 360, and I want to get eventually get the PS3, which mm. I did eventually get on second hand. Next generation, Xbox One, I will get a PS4. And like, as I said in 2014, I've said if I fix my challenge then I'll treat myself to one but at the end of the day it comes down to a disposable income against desire to play a game now some people said to me oh consoles are so expensive well the PS4 is about 300 quid now mm. the PS3 six months after it launched or a year after it launched was about 379 pounds it was 80 quid less than the last generation, then seven years ago. That's mm. with inflation and everything else. I mean, we're talking about a 280 quid console now, a 250 quid console, which is ridiculous for what you're getting. So prices are you know, not an issue at all for me. It's just a case of having to justify it when you've got a support family and you've got to pay bills and everything else. But mm. I know for a fact, if I was still 
the 20 year old me with a factory job where I was pulling in a couple hundred quid a week and mm. nothing to spend it on. Of course I'd have those mm. things. I used all of my university money to buy an N64. <laughs> of course I'm going to use mm. it. Because you don't have any other priority. Yeah. Like, if you're so into games, it's like people who have a car like, at that age mm. and they've, they've bought a Ford Escort and they've mm. chucked spoilers and lights and shit all over yeah, it. Yeah, sure. thousands on it to devalue it by thousands. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's just... time as well because... I would have been probably 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I would have been the original Xbox, and I think I had FIFA soccer or football or whatever country you're listening yeah. from. Uh, whatever iteration it was, probably FIFA 04, I guess. Yeah. And they also had the management, the football management game. Yeah. And they could sync up, so you could play the management game, yeah. and then you could obviously control the games in FIFA football. So yeah. You had to swap the discs. Yeah. And I'd never dream of doing that these days. I'd be like, fuck off. Whereas then, I was quite happy to go to disc, right? Manage, do the weekly bit, yeah. training, set that, set my formation, yeah. play a game, do a swap disc. And, you know, I yeah. did several seasons doing that and I didn't think anything of it. No. And I see. The and whole and concept if we, changed. If we were 10 years older, mm. like, so our kids, respectively, I mean, what now? We should be like 13, 14. Uh, Annabelle's three in March, so yeah, yeah should be 12, so, 13. So, so getting forward sort of teen years. Mm. My youngest is six, just about to seven, so he'd be late mm. teens. So I kind of, I still have a financial burden, but I'd be more settled, hopefully. Mm. And I'd, if I was now mm. ten years older, I'd, of course I'd play. And, and there are a lot mm. of gamers now, and obviously mature games have it, midlife gamers mm. help deals with it, where you've got these people in their mid thirties mm. upwards, yeah, who are investing a lot of their money because this is a hobby they're passionate mm. about, and I think. But Sony and Microsoft are kind of they're catering to that market mm. by making it reasonable to own it. Yeah. Whereas Nintendo seems to be, well, that's not our market. Yeah. So we'll just make one product mm. and that'll be fine. <laughs> and it'll stay there. And they, they've kind of like it. set their stall out, this is what we want to yeah. do, which is And you know, Nintendo's been like that for since day one. Yeah. And they they'll never change. Yeah. They don't need to change because they're doing everything mm. they need to do. I've said it many times, people say well, there aren't that many releases. Mm. Well, I'd rather have a console with eight really great games. In a year of ten releases, than eight really good games in a year of two hundred, because mm. it's consistency of qualityness. Mm. Qualityness, wow! Oh, yes, to invent words there. Quality uh, that Nintendo are well known for. Mm. I mean, there aren't that many first-party games on the Wii U that Nintendo put out that are awful. Yeah, and the fact that we're all waiting for the next Zelda mm. and a new Mario and a new Donkey Kong or whatever is testament to the fact that they. Consistently it's, it's, made good games. It is lazy to just say, titles. let's use the same franchise mm. over and over and over and over. But they've created and tapped into a nostalgia mm. that because Sega's no longer in the game, none of the other companies were there. Yeah. But, you know, maybe Crash Bandicoot a little bit for mm. some of the younger listeners. I mean, it's not really my generation. To sort of, I played them, yeah. but I was a later team. Mm. I grew up with Sonic. Mm. So every Sonic game, I kind of get a little bit and annoyed yeah. that it doesn't quite tap into it. But if Sega was still going and we were having new Shenmue mm. and we were having new um, mm. Shinobi games and we had them asked some yeah. after Sega, they're still making the games. But if they were making a console that had mm. these big platforms, they would still be putting out these games. Mm. Toe Jam and Earl would still be making mediocre quality games. <laughs> <laughs> um, you'd have these kind of big Sega titles and it would be as nostalgic. Yeah. And Nintendo have got that. They've got a, a, an incredibly rich mm. stable of weird games. Mm. Like Fat Plumber, weirdly female looking <laughs> elf person with a sword, monkey with a tie on, mm. a pink thing that can suck everything into its mouth, and a fox that can fly a spaceship. Mm. I mean, it's, it's brilliant. Really yeah, it is. It's so simple. I mean, if, but Ocarina of Time was probably one of the biggest games of my youth. Yeah. Yeah, I love that game. Yeah. Played it hours and hours and hours. It's a and... good game, regardless. Yeah, exactly. Of that. That's why we have warm nostalgia mm. for it because they were good. Mm. It's and every just, generation has its. It's not rose tinted. Mm. It's genuinely based on the fact that they were brilliant games. Yes. Um, for me, I think Sonic Three Plus Knuckles. Mm. When I got the plug through cartridge, and I was like, I'd read about it in Meme mm. Machines, and it was like, oh. And you plug it, and, and, it to, <laughs> and you could plug old Sonic games in, mm. and you get different things happen. So if you put Sonic Two in, you could play as Knuckles in Sonic Two. Mm. If you put Sonic One in, you could play all the bonus levels from Sonic Three mm. just as a game, it's like yeah. running around collecting the, the balls. The rings, yeah. Big, yeah. Um, and then Sonic Three, you had Knuckles in it, mm. or you had Sonic and Tails in the Knuckles storyline, and it just made this huge game. Yeah. But you could also, and a friend of mine did it, and it was awesome. He had the Mega CD with the Mega Drive, Mega 32X, with then it had 
I believe, Sonic and Knuckles, then with something out. Uh, there's all these adapters that went mm. this high yeah. of all the plug through technology that Sega <laughs> had added. And you could still play the game mm. with all that plugged in. It was the same, right? Yeah. You were saying about swapping discs and, mm. and playing around and mucking around. The console manufacturers were quite happy mm. to go, well, you know what? We want to be able to add that character into the game retrospectively, but we don't have DLC. Yeah. We just have to come up with the technology to plug through a game so it'll still read the original cartridge, but then modify it. I mean, that's insane yeah. to think that you could do it for more than one game. Mm. But it would, and you, it, different Sega games you could plug in and get yeah. a different effect come through. Um, so I always just kind of do feel a bit sad that we have we don't have a Sega console like that. But the fact is, only Nintendo could make their franchises work. Yeah. If you like, I mean, I think people always say, why don't Nintendo farm out Mario mm. to other consoles? Because yeah. they make so much money. It devalues. But what could Mario you imagine is... what would happen if there was a Mario game on X- on, my, on Xbox? It wouldn't be, the be a Mario game. No. The, the, the sense of style and creativity of this would be lost. There'd also be a sense that it sold its soul a little bit. Yeah. Because it, it was so... Bizarre. It's like when you play... Yeah, so definitively this, Nintendo. I'm, I'm trying to remember what console I played. I think it was a CD32 or the CDI. Might have been a CDI, mm. actually, the Philips. Um, but they did some Zelda mm. kind of interactive adventures and they were kind of like kind of CGI animated yeah. bits. Like hand drawn animation, but they were on the CD. Yeah. So it was that kind of FMV. That's what I doesn't know. And then you kind of have this weird, terribly mm. animated like Link character, and it was all it was awful, and it did feel like it had cheapened Zelda. Yeah, because it was just so different. Mm. And that, that's the only time I've ever really seen. I've seen Mario do like educational games on the mm. PC, um, but it was it was just awful. Yeah, it's just, just simply awful. So yeah, so I think this year. We've got an interesting one because mm. we've got three consoles, three big consoles yeah. that have all got a decent state of the games and a good platform. Mm. Next one's obviously we've got New Zelda coming, mm-hmm. which is I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of that at E3. We know we've got a Halo this year for, for the first one, and Uncharted mm. is going to be the big one for PS4. I imagine yeah. I can't think of anything else this year that's going to be as big. Probably not. There's a few cross-platform games. The Division is it you? Yeah, one. Uh, uh, a lot of people are excited for that. Yeah. Um, what was it, Evolve? Evolve? A few people have been talking about recently. Good. And um, Dying Light as well from Techland. Mm. Uh, yeah. It looks like yeah. a very good zombie game. But again, I mean, there's loads of games that are coming out mm. cross platform, but it's time to be. So it's specific yeah. to each of the consoles. That's yeah, that's where the, the, the battle's gonna probably going to be won and lost. So. It'd be interesting to see how the new 3DS XL, mm. the new Nintendo 3DS, new, rather. New. Um, that should be the name of this episode. Mm. The new podcast about the new, new. New Nintendo 3DS, <laughs> not Excel or LL. But um, yeah, so obviously, thank you for listening. I think we'll wrap it up there. Yeah. Uh, we, we've covered a lot of ground, I think. Yeah, I mean, we've sat down, we've recorded what, for three and a half hours, four hours nearly now? Yeah, across our so, introductory yeah. and two, or first two. Yeah, episodes. this is quite a, a mammoth session mm. um, in the sense that we've both eaten a mammoth in the mm-hmm. drive through restaurant from the Flintstones. Mm, apparently. Uh, <laughs> It was used as the dishwasher, wasn't it? That was a mammoth in the first uh, Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Bronsaurus Rib, I think, is what mm. they ate actually at the the diner. But no, so we've um we we we've, we've put our heart and soul into these. Uh, it's as I say, it's just it really is finding our feet a little bit, mm. talking about what we've been doing and what we're looking forward mm. to. I think it's always good when you're introducing a new podcast. To, I think uh, so. And obviously at this stage we've just talked about a lot of games that we don't necessarily know a whole lot about. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's January yeah. and this is coming. Yeah. The details are still a little bit thin on some of these games. Exactly. <laughs> and so, as we go forward, what we'll be talking about, I think you can expect every week, is what we've been playing, mm. and specifically as we go through our gaming resolutions, we will feedback on that at least every other week. Um, hopefully every week, if we can get our asses in game play properly. Uh, we'll be looking at some elements of the news, but only the stuff really that we care about. Like, yeah. If somebody's bringing out a new game... Phew, Fair enough, you've read mm. about that and you're a gamer. If you've got an opinion about it, you'll hear about it. Mm. Uh, we will be having guests come on, uh, sort, of, sort of mutual friends. We sort of know him through people. <laughs> who we event, occasionally bump in. I've bumped into him at Eurogame, we both bumped into him at Cinema. We have, yeah. Uh, he's going to hopefully do some videos for the site and he might join in. Um, that's Mark. Yep. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do know him. <laughs> uh, we've got Dalek, he's currently beavering away making some little uh, audio bits. They might have been in this episode, but at this point in time, I haven't got them from him, so it's probably not going to get edited in at this point. But he is uh, working at those. Uh, Newsbot has sent me an email asking if he can be on. 
Uh, frankly, I think he's got a goal, but I might let him come on every now and then and just do a little bit for you guys. And of course, um, the door is always open to Dr. Hadhock, although at the moment uh, he's cycling a lot more and um, podcasting while cycling is not a good idea. So, you know, when he's finished his bicycle, 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 bicycle race, race. then uh, he might come on. I like how we both finish on race there. That was good. It's always a race relation in this <laughs> podcast. Um, so, yeah, so thank you for listening. If you've got any feedback, get in touch with us at we are the Lola course with a letter R instead of the word. You can message me directly at Bouncer with an HR second B. And I'm on Twitter at Rob McGregor35. So, yeah, uh, feel free to get in touch. We've also got email, which is wearethelonacourse at gmail.com. Uh, you can get us there. You can comment on the post that, well, like this will go on to Spreaker, so you can comment on there. Leave us a review. If you've got, like, some proper criticisms, get in touch with us directly and write a review because we'd like to be able to talk back to you and get some feedback from you. Uh, I think the only criticism I can come up with is maybe. I need to drink a little bit more because I'm quite dry. Uh, we don't need to record two and a half, three hours at a time. That's never going to happen again, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, there will be a structure form over the next few episodes. This has just been get in, recap 2014, look forward to 2015, and then we can start fresh. So thank you very much for listening. Drop us a review on iTunes. Share us around the internet as much as you can. And let's see if we can start off 2015 as... We are back in the game. Keep it on brand. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. We're waving. Keep waving, Rob. Waving. Waving.